central idea in any anatomy physiology course is the concept of homeostasis. We had raised this term before in an earlier, earlier video, but let's actually delve into it just a little bit more detail. Homeostasis is defined as the state of equilibrium of the internal environment of the body that is maintained by dynamic processes of feedback and regulation. Homeostasis is a dynamic equilibrium. Uh, and that means what? It means the body doesn't like change. All right, the body doesn't want to change. It will do what it can to prevent change. It wants to stay in the middle. So for example, if you get hungry, things kick in to make you want to go and eat. Hopefully, once you've been satiated, once you're no longer hungry, your body will turn off that signal. This ties in with blood glucose and all that fun stuff. You start to get tired, your body starts to run down, energy levels are getting low, you need to go take a nap, you need to go to sleep, your body will send you signals, you will sleep, hopefully you'll wake up when you're done needing to rest. I don't know anybody who's able to do that, it's usually the alarm clock and a snooze button. But what we have here is homeostasis. It's the body's desire to stay normal, the body's desire to resist change. We have two types of feedback mechanisms mechanisms. We have positive feedback and we have negative feedback. Let's talk about positive feedback for just a second. Positive feedback is the weird one. This is the odd one. This is the one where the reactions get stronger and stronger. This is a cascading reaction. This is a reaction that becomes more and more powerful. A great example of the positive feedback is childbirth. So for example, the head of the fetus pushes against the cervix, signal is sent to the brain to secrete oxytocin or oxytocin, depending on what side of the pond you're on. Oxytocin or oxytocin stimulates the uterine contractions and pushes the fetus towards the cervix. Anybody who has been around somebody giving birth or maybe you've given birth knows that the first contraction and the last contraction are definitely different. As I've said before, you will hear me talk quite a bit about my kids and my family. And in the previous video, we talked about pitting edema, well, kind of along the same lines. My wife, at the birth of our first son, was hooked up to this thing, this machine that gave a number on the contractions. And I'd been through birthing class. I knew how to breathe. I got a certificate that says I know how to breathe and I can help people breathe. So I was there trying to help my wife breathe. <sighs> I don't know why, but I was younger and foolish. So I'm helping my wife breathe and I'm watching the machine that measures the contraction go up and it goes up to 50. I'm like, oh honey, you just had a contraction. She's like, mm. and then it goes up again and it goes up to 60. I'm like, oh honey, look, you just had a contraction. She's like, mm -hmm. and it goes up to 70 and it goes up to 80 and it broke 100. I'm like, honey, you went over 100. And she's like, yeah, huh? Uh, about 150, 160, she very politely told me that if I did not shut up, I would be dead. So I shut up. But what we have here is the increasing of contractions, the increasing of the body's reaction to get that kid out of there. Okay? And so that's what we're seeing here an increase in reaction. A positive feedback is not a sustainable reaction. We don't want a positive feedback in most situations. In childbirth, yes, we want the kid out. Negative feedback is the most common type of homeostasis mechanism. This is the one that you always hear people talk about, the air conditioner, the thermostat. So let's talk about the thermostat. In negative feedback and a thermostat, you will set the desired air to, let's say, 72 degrees. And so you have it set at 72 and it starts to get warmer. The air conditioner should go, hey, we're over 72, kick on, cool things down back to 72 and turn off. Let's say it gets colder, it goes to 71, 70, and then it goes, hey, we're getting a little colder, kick on, brings the heat on, brings you back up to 72. That's the more common mechanism that we find in the body. It will try to bring things back to where they are supposed to be. It'll be a range and it will try to bring things back in. Our last concept when we're talking about homeostasis is health. What is health? I ask this question to my students every semester. 
And it's a thinking question. What is health? What does it mean to be healthy? You're assumably in a healthcare profession program of some type. So wouldn't it be nice to know what health in that healthcare profession actually meant? I've run across several definitions over the years on what health is, and there's one definition I absolutely love. In fact, I love it so much that every year it is an extra credit question on the first exam. The students have to write it verbatim, word for word. It's the only question I'm that much of a hard nose on, but I want them to know it. The definition of health, according to me, and as well as some other people out there, get a great definition, is health is the optimal state of physical, mental, and social well-being. Not merely the absence of disease <coughs> or infirmities. So let's actually examine this definition for a second. Health is the optimal state of physical, mental, and social. Physical, mental, and social, PMS. Uh, physical, you're physically okay. You have good blood pressure, your heart's beating okay, your triglycerides in the right level, you're getting enough exercise, physical. By the way, if you've seen the older videos, you might notice that Mr. Ford is a lot better shape than he used to be. Physically, uh, about a year ago, I was in horrible shape. I was over 300 pounds. I know, I've lost quite a bit of weight since then um, through a um, doctor thing up here, uh, my weight doctor up in the North Virginia, Maryland area. Uh, no surgery, great program. Anyhow, but physically, physically I was kind of bleh, okay? Walking up the stairs was a <gasps> kind of a thing. So physically, not there. Did some exercise, lost some weight. Physically, I'm back to where I should be, where I want to be, yeah, all right. Mentally, mental, mental, okay? Mentally, are you sound? This is all health. Physically, you're in great shape. Mentally, not so much. Then the third aspect of health is the social aspect. We are social beings. Humans are social. Hello, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace. <clears throat> um, but we have social needs. We like we like people who like people, okay? We like to be social. Now, not all of us like to be as social as other people, but we are social beings. We are social creatures. We have to have a support group. If you are in great shape, if you're mentally fit, but you have no friends, that can take a toll. So health, the optimal state of physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmities, meaning you're not just missing being sick, you have to have all those other things to be really healthy.